What's up everyone? I'm Marilee Blair and I'm a serious travel addict as I've been to 54 countries so far. And today I'm going to talk to you about London, England in the United Kingdom. London is a city that's been around for over 2,000 years and has an incredible history that's influenced the entire world. So whether you're a history buff or a foodie, a theater lover, a high tea drinker, or a nature enthusiast, there's something for everyone in London. This was my second trip to London, but the last time I was here, I was 16, so it was nice to explore and come back and see it in my 30s as an adult. So here are some of my travel tips for hotels, activities, food, and recommendations of free things to do. Hotels. For this trip, it was a six day and five night stay and I went with my sister. So we decided to have a hotel walking distance near the famous landmarks like Big Ben and the London Eye, which were about an 18 minute walk. The hotel we chose was a newer four star modern hotel called the Westminster London Curio Collection by Hilton that costs $1,582.37. Divided by two people, it is about $791.18 per person for five nights, which was actually a normal price when comparing with other hotels in London since it is a lot more expensive than most European countries. This hotel is also really close to public transportation so you can easily get to London's West End and South Bank from the Pimlico Underground Station half a mile away. Landmarks to enjoy. Of course, you have to go to the Big Ben in Parliament Square. You have to take a cute photo and video at the famous red telephone booth in Parliament Square. It's also right near the Big Big Ben and you're gonna see so many of them so that way you can get in line to take a photo. I took a lot myself. And then of course go to the London Bridge and the most famous bridge which is actually called Tower Bridge and that's where Tower Castle is. It's walking distance from there so I would definitely recommend enjoying both of them. Also enjoy the free observation deck called Sky Garden but make sure if you want to go for free that you get a reservation as soon as you know you're going to London as they book up fast. But not to worry, if you don't get a free booking to the observation deck, you can still eat at any restaurant in the Sky Garden building and you'll still get free access to the observation deck. And don't forget to enjoy the famous London Eye. It's the giant Ferris wheel and it's a great way to see the beautiful views of London even if the weather is gloomy like it was when we went but it was still worth it to me. It costs 65 pounds for two people. This is including tax but you have to experience it if it's your first time. I went when I was 16 so I really wanted to go back and experience it again at 34 and my sister was so happy to enjoy it for her first time too so it made it worth it to make memories with her. Also go to Park Royale. It's a beautiful park near Buckingham Palace and of course go to Buckingham Palace. You could get really lucky to watch the changing of the guard. We didn't go inside this time since I went on my first trip and it was freezing but it was still so nice walking around in the winter it was looking so beautiful covered in snow and also walk around Soho London it's a really adorable cute walkway filled with beautiful lights shops and so many great coffee and pastry shops famous London activities you have to see a show while you're in London we both finally got to see Wicked at the Apollo Victoria Theater for 66 pounds for two people which is way better than most prices we would have paid for a Broadway show and we got really amazing seats. So here's a tip. If you choose the restricted view tickets, you get to be way closer to the stage for half the price. And it's a way better view than sitting in the way back. And we decided let's just take a chance and book it. And it was the best decision because we were actually able to see the entire play without any issues. No obstructed views, even though it said it. So I highly recommend booking those tickets to experience it in London. Another activity you have 
have to do. You have to do high tea. It's just something you have to do when you're in London. That's what they're famous for is the high tea. So we chose to go to the Dilly on Piccadilly as that was my sister's dream. So we did the Peter Rabbit high tea and it was absolutely adorable because everything from the cups and decorations were Peter Rabbit themed. And you don't have to be a kid to go there. We were both just adults, me and my sister, and there were other adults that were just them. And of course there were some adults with kids, but anyone can go. It cost 49 pounds per person and it included unlimited Peter Rabbit afternoon tea flavors, sandwiches, scones, desserts, and pastries. And if you were still hungry, you can ask for more pastries if you liked very specific ones. And they also have vegetarian and pescatarian options, which really helped me and my sister out since I'm pescatarian and she's vegetarian. Foodie time. My favorite interactive restaurant of the entire trip I have had on my bucket list for so long was the famous Sketch. Sketch is a multifaceted venue that combines art, design, dining, entertainment, offering visitors a memorable and immersive experience in their five different rooms to eat, drink at, or enjoy high tea. The moment you first enter Sketch, you enter a magical wonderland of fantasy that feels like you truly left the real world and we transported into this imaginary land. The main restaurants are The Glade, The Parlor, and The Lecture Room and Library the gallery to enjoy high tea or dinner, and lastly, the East Bar to enjoy drinks. Reservations for majority of the rooms were sold out except for two of the spots. And my sister is very into fantasy, so I already knew she would wanna go to the Glade restaurant. So we took the last reservation available, which was for breakfast, and it was so worth it. The pricing was really affordable, like a normal brunch spot anywhere in the US, but I wasn't sure since one of the restaurants at Sketch is a Michelin star restaurant, but it ended up being really affordable. So it's nice they really had something for everyone and every budget. But back to the Glade. So we arrived at the restaurant early, so we got to take a bunch of photos and videos in it because of just the room, the walkway, photos of me and video because no other tourists were there. It was just me and my sister for a long time. And we felt like we were at Disneyland about to go on a magical land in a magical forest with the cool bar, chandeliers, lighting, and just this different world. My sister was so happy. This was hers and my favorite part of the entire London trip. We both just felt like we were little kids in a fantasy room and just enjoyed it here so much that we didn't want to leave. I would go back to London just to go back to Sketch. And honestly, I would try to do all of the rooms and restaurants and I would do the high tea there. But again, please book your reservation at Sketch ASAP. The moment you you know you're going to London, book it and thank me later. Other food options. So our first night, we arrived late from the train, so we just ordered room service from our hotel and the food there was actually really delicious. On the first night, we loved their salmon and pasta. So if you stay at the hotel that I mentioned, trying their room service at least one night, if you're staying there for a bit and want to have a more relaxing feel, I highly recommend it. Another restaurant that we really love because I love Mediterranean food is Troya South Bank Charcoal Kebab Kitchen. It was one of my favorites because of their yummy lentil soup and they had a really great shrimp jambalaya and it's nice. It was so convenient because it was walking distance from the London Eye. Another great restaurant, the Visconti of Westminster. It was an Italian fine dining restaurant and it was also walking distance from our hotel and they had the most delicious fish and my sister really loved her risotto and it was great because we didn't make a reservation. We walked in, nobody was there, so it was easy. We got seated and got our food really fast after we ordered. Another restaurant in Parliament Square is called The Red Lion. They had a lot of reviews, so we went and swooped in and got a seat because it's first come first serve, and we got the famous fish pie there since I don't eat meat. If you eat meat, you would have to get the famous meat pie because that's like a typical London food. And my sister got the veggie souffle, and both 
were really good. And I mentioned earlier, if you have a reservation for one of the restaurants at the Sky Garden, you get that free entrance to the observation deck. If you don't get the free ticket, I had made a reservation for dinner at Darwin Brazier at the Sky Garden. And we had a delicious sea bass, soup, and a mushroom burger, which had gorgeous views of London from where we were sitting. And then after dinner, we went to the observation deck to enjoy the night city views of the Tower Bridge and all of London. So definitely take your time and enjoy the Sky Garden observation deck while you're there after dinner. Some coffee spots. I love my coffee. London had this amazing coffee place called EL and N London. It was my favorite coffee spot on this trip. It was designed for Instagram lovers and content creators like myself. Oh my God, I can't get over it. It was so cute inside. Everything was pink and pretty and just aesthetically pleasing with all the furniture, signs, the Christmas tree, and other designs. I got my very first red velvet latte there, which was so delicious, and we shared a strawberry cheesecake, but I highly recommend going there. And another great coffee place near our hotel is called Ravello Coffee. It was walking distance, and they have some really great mochas and hot chocolate. If you just need a good coffee place and on your way to Big Ben, that would be a great spot to go. Pret is also a very popular coffee place in London that has been around since 1986, which also has really great lattes and mochas. You have to go to one if you're in London. Transportation. When we went to London, we left from Paris by train. So we took the Eurostar train from Paris Gare du Nord station to arrive at London St. Pancreas station. The cost was $65.47 per person for this train ride. That took two and a half hours, but we had a delay due to technical difficulties, so we ended up arriving five hours later. So it's always good when you're booking trains and flights to always account for things happening, so that way you have enough time to get to your destination so you don't risk missing a tour or activity if you book something the day that you arrive. For getting around, we mostly walked. Sometimes we took the bus, which was really easy to use and navigate using Google Maps. And we did use Uber when we were freezing and couldn't wait for the bus much longer because it was below 45 degrees and I already get cold below 60 degrees in San Diego. So, which is why I made exceptions on this trip to take Ubers to not be standing in the freezing cold for 20 to 30 minutes. For currency, London uses pounds. So you can't use euros. You do need to exchange money in pounds. If you wanna have cash just in case for taxis and the bus system. And you should always have cash just for emergencies. But I like to use my Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card. It helped a lot and we use that the majority of our trip since it acts as a travel insurance and there's no foreign fees. Thank you all for exploring the world one video at a time with me, your own personal bougie budgeter. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and look for brand new episodes every Wednesday. And for all helpful links I mentioned and more about my travel services, read them in my description below.